Welcome to this week's Planet Shakers podcast. Our brand new Planet Boom single, I Was Made For This, is now available on all streaming platforms. Go check it out and allow it to bless you. Let's jump into this week's podcast. What's this, a year of? A year of? Victory. Victory. And one of our key Scriptures for the year is Romans chapter 8, verse 37. No, despite all these things, And what are all these things? All these things are challenges you face. Life is full of challenges. It's not easy life, but it's victorious life. It says, despite all these things, persecution, famine, lack, whatever, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours. I like how it says ours, not mine only, because we are a family. And there's, you know, the church look, looks so uh, different all over the world. You know, di- you know, it's like football teams. They all have different flavours, but they all play AFL. And it's the same with the church. Some people worship quietly. We worship boisterously because we see it in Scripture. Uh, you know, some churches are more traditional. Some churches are more modern. But the, the thing that unites the church is Jesus. The Trinity, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And we celebrate what God does through His church. There's not one church, it's the church. It's, so it's ours. Let's keep going. Sorry. Um, by the way, I don't have a manufacturer that does R. I, I discovered this brand called Represent. And so R for Represent. Represent in the Kingdom of God. Okay. Overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. So our overwhelming victory comes through, comes through. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says this, To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Salvation was coming to not just the Jews, but to the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. When you become a Christian, the presence of God comes and lives in you. Christ in you, the hope, everyone say hope, Hope. of glory. So Christ in you, if you have Christ in you, you have hope in you. And so today I wanna speak to you very briefly on the topic hope. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, Hebrews chapter 11, verse one says, now faith is the substance. So it's not just this ethereal thing. It's substance of things we hope for. Everyone say hope for. The evidence of things not seen. So that word hope means to expect. If Jesus lives in you, you can expect that God will win for you. Overwhelming victory is out through Christ. And if He lives in us, hope is in you. Hope means expectation. Do you have expectation to see what God will do? Because victory is attached to expectation. In the finals right now, all, all the teams are going out, all their fans have expectation, they have hope that they have, but their expectation isn't assured. It's, it's there hoping their team plays well, but we can be confident that Jesus has already won, so He doesn't lose. The enemy has been defeated in our lives. And so we can have confident expectation of the things we hope for will be seen. A lady by the name, I was doing a little bit of research on this in a lady called Carol Graham. And she's an economist. She wrote a book on the power of hope. And she said this, In a society marked by extreme inequality of income and opportunity, why should economists care about how people feel? The truth is that feelings of well-being are critical metrics that predict future life outcomes. It's called expectation. In this timely innovative account, economist Carol Graham argues for the importance of hope. Little studied in, the, in economics at present as an independent dimension of well-being. Given America's current mental health crisis thrown into stark uh, relief by uh, COVID, 
how may hope may be the most important measure of well-being and researchers are tracking trends in hope as a key factor in understanding the rising numbers of deaths of despair and premature mortality. Hope is so important to our lives because even the economists are saying it affects the economy. Where there's no expectation or hope, people get into survival mode. But where there's hope, expectation, people live in I'm going to thrive mode. Even in the area of just life, if you lose hope, you lose the will to do something with your life. You, you drift aimlessly. I've never met a kid that doesn't have a dream to do something. What do you want to do when you grow up? Oh, I want to be a farmer. I want to be a singer. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a policeman. I want to be Superman. I want to be Spider-Man. I want to be LeBron James. I want to be Messi. The second greatest player of all time. How many believe that? How many think I'm a liar? The greatest player of all time. You ready for this? This is for all the Latino people. David Beckham. <laughs> well, he's the best looking player of all time anyway. Uh, <laughs> I knew that would be bad. All the Manchester supporters said no. <laughs> but hope is about expectation. What, what are you expecting to happen with your life? You should never turn up to anything without expectation. And don't expect the bad like when I go to the dentist, I expect pain. No, I expect the good. I remember last year I had the first operation of my life. I had my gallbladder out and, and I was nervous. I, I was trying to be cool, but I was nervous and I was in my gown and that's not a very good thing to look strong in. <laughs> it's not like I got a Superman suit on, I got a gown with a bossy nurse. And... Uh, and so I'm there and my expectation in, and then the surgeon comes in. He's a really good guy. He's bald like me. And people go, why do you wear a hat? Because I'm bald. Oh, you with hair, don't be judgmental. You don't know what bald people have to put up with. I glow in the, in the lights. And, and so <laughs> I go in there and uh, um, the surgeon comes in, sits next to me and he goes, ah, oh, it's going to be good. You're just going to sleep and you're going to come out and you'll be gone in a, a day or two. It's going to be awesome. And, and so what was he doing? He was helping my expectation. I was going to have some surgery, which means some injury to my body but, or, or injury initially to cut things away and then it heals. But he was creating the expectation of the, of the, the encounter, which would lead to healing. And so I went in there, it was awesome. I'm gonna go for lots of operations now because oh, you just, it's amazing. And, and, and then you wake up and they feed you sandwiches, that's good. And, and I was gone home in like 12 hours, it was amazing because my body is so fit, it just recovered so well. <laughs> and, and, and so what were they doing? They were managing expectations saying, hey, this is gonna be good and you're gonna get through. But if you have an expectation of things are going to be bad, guess what's going to happen? You're going to live with that bad mindset. So everything you're going to look at is through negativity instead of expectation of what it could be. Even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because your staff and your rod they comfort me. In other words, I know I'm going to go through some stuff, but I have expectation. I'm not going to stay here. I'm going to get through and I'm not going to be bitter. I'm going to be better. I'm not going to be weaker. I'm going to be stronger. Expectation. Why? Because expectation or hope is connected to a promise. As we read before, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. So there's a promise that we can have the expectation that overwhelming victory, Nike, hyper Nike. In other words, we win big time. This world is looking for hope. Why do you think people try to bring winners down, try to attack winners as people who are successful? They're the people who don't have hope. 
They're the people who want to bring you down to their level. But people of hope say, I aspire. Hey, I'm going to be like that one day. Oh, that's going to be an example of how I will live. Let us be a people. Yes, there's issues in Victoria. There are a lot of issues. But let's, let's speak the, the, the expectation of what it can be, what it will be. And let's be people who, who be a part of the answer. Let's be people who, yes, we need to look at different things, but be a people who say, hey, we're going to be part of the solution, not the problem. Why? Our expectation is connected to a promise. God says... So we believe. You know, by the way, some people, you, you know, like, well, you know, when you're talking about churches like ours, you know, they're, oh, it's so, you feel they're hypey. We're not hypey. Hypey is about getting excited about a game that doesn't give you eternal value. True emotions is getting excited about Jesus who gives you eternal life. If we can get excited at the football, at the soccer, at any sport, any place, any concert, we should be more excited in the house of God because we have true hope. So hope is connected to promises. Hope is something to be maintained and built. Don't lose your hope. 1 Peter in the Message Bible says this in verse 5, it says, don't lose a minute in building on what you've been given. You've been given hope, hope in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Complementing your basic faith with good character, spiritual understanding, alert discipline, passionate patience, reverent wonder, warm friendliness and generous love, each dimension fitting into developing the others. With these qualities, active and growing in your life. No grass, I love this, no grass will grow under your feet nor day will pass without its reward as you mature in your experience of our Master Jesus. Without these qualities, you can't see what's right before you. Oblivious, your old civil life has been wiped off the books. So here we gotta build our hope, build our expectation, build on it. Add to your faith, add to your faith, add to your faith. That's why the Word is so important, add to your faith. That's why worship is so important, add to your faith. That's why fellowship is important, add to your faith. You know, all those things are so important, yet all those things the enemy uses to pull your faith down. He'll put people around you that discourage you and disappoint you. See, too many people put expectations in people rather than God. We're all fallen people. We've all got mistakes. So let's have grace to people's mistakes. Let's put our worship of Jesus and let's, let's honour people, but let's put our expectation in Him in them. So instead of looking at all the things they do in the flesh, look at all the things that can be in the Spirit. That's a drop the mic moment right there. See, we got a God not who cancels. The only thing He cancels is sin. We've got a God who restores. He restores the broken. He restores the failed. He restores the hurt. He restores, restores, restores. That's why we sing, you're the God of. Not the God who cancels. You're the God who restores. He cancels sin. But He restores you. So hope is to be built on. Hope is to be shared. Hebrews 10, 25, it says, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. Then uh, Philippians 2 says, Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other, making one, loving one another, working together with one mind and purpose. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Think of others as better than yourself. Don't only look for your own interests, but take an interest in others Two, we got to be people who share our hope. Put courage into people, encourage people. We saw this in, in COVID that so many people got isolated and discouraged. I love as our church, what we did as our church, we made thousands and thousands of phone calls and Zoom calls to reach out to people. We, we set up our, we had our feeding programs, but we made them bigger and we haven't stopped it. We've kept it going. And by the way, 
It takes a village to make it happen. I remember saying we're going to feed 2,000 people a week. But if, if Pastor Neil didn't come along and say, hey, how are we going to do this? And then the team and the volunteers and the staff and all that, if we didn't put our efforts together, there wouldn't be around 3 million meals equivalent given out in our cities today. I had a dream to start a church from God. God go, go, said, you know, Russell, so planet shakers, okay, that's what I felt. We came and did this church almost 20 years ago. Now over 15,000 people in Melbourne. But it didn't happen because of me. I was just one part of the jigsaw. It was everybody encouraging one another. It's a team effort. That's why church should never be built on one person. It's built on team. It's built on Jesus. He's the captain. He's the leader. So we need to share our hope, share our lives. Watch this, I better hurry. Hope is lived through taking steps of trust towards what you expect. (laughs) I could do a whole sermon on this Scripture, but Psalm 37 says this, Don't worry about the wicked or the envy or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they'll soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they'll soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you'll live safely in the land and prosper. Everyone say safely. Prosper. Take delight in the Lord and He will give you your heart's desire. Christ in me, the hope of glory. I now have the heart of Christ. Now I have the dreams that God has given me to live my life out. So my desires of my heart will be fulfilled because I have hope in me. If I'm... If I'm My vocation is to be a doctor. I'm going to pursue that with the hope of what God will do. Not just selfishly what I can get, but what I can give. If it's a lawyer, if it's an accountant, it's a father, a mother, whatever, you know. Trust in the Lord and do good. Take delight in the Lord and He'll give your hearts that I desire. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him and He will help you. Even when it's dark, God gives you the answer to live in hope. Your word is a lamp to my is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. In other words, God says, I'm gonna bring light in darkness. I'm gonna bring hope in hopelessness. I'm gonna bring faith in fear. I'm gonna bring provision in lack. You just keep believing, you just keep stepping, you keep hoping. Even the economists are discovering you need hope in society. They've learnt you just can't look at the numbers. You've got to look at the motive behind the numbers. <laughs> hope. And hope is based finally in the love of God. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope and love. And the greatest of these is love. See, what happens with hope is sometimes we get disappointed and so we give up. You know, one of the things that COVID did, the first time in our history that, that I had parents having their kids on suicide watch or harm watch because they were going through hopelessness. And we as a church had to keep reaching out and reaching out. Right? Why did that happen? Kids don't usually have hopelessness, but they were in this situation where there seemed no hope. Thank God we're out of that and we're going to keep moving forward and we're growing and getting stronger. See what? What doesn't take you out makes you stronger. And so, (laughs) but here's the thing about hope. hope. Hope needs to be based in love. For God so loved the world that He gave. In other words, He invested, He gave, he, He expected something to happen because He loved. I have a grandson, his name's Malachi. He would have been dedicated today, but Sam's in Indonesia. Um, Plant Shakers Band is there. Um, and so we'll do it next time. Um, when Malachi is born, his parents aren't sitting there and they're loving them and they just, oh, I hope you do nothing with your life. They have hope for Malachi. It's like the band can come out, by the way. It's up hiding. Are you down there? Oh, the sermon's so great, you want to be on the front row. Yes, okay. Um, there's Jesse. Jesse's girl. Um, <laughs> hey? 
You haven't, you probably have. Look at you, your beard. Wow, it looks better too, actually. Your wife might not might think, your beard's always been like that. I think you should grow a Moses beard. Where's the singers? You think you can have the day off? Oh, here you go. There's your wife in whom you're well pleased. Hello, Pastor Rudy. Now here's Amy. That's who I wanted out here, really. <laughs> it, was, it really wasn't about you guys, it was about her. Were you feeding? Okay, all right, good. So th- this, this girl, she's, she's cute, she's anointed, she's talented. But when she was born, all she did was eat, sleep and excrete. That's all she did. You weren't singing or doing anything. And, but we had hope for her. We had expectation for her and Jonathan. I'm still disappointed with his football skills, but we're getting there anyway. No, that's not true. Um, and so we had hope, expectation, but along the way, she was not perfect. I know that's hard to believe. She was not perfect. I remember a time she got mad at her brother when she was younger and she picked up one of, the, sorry for telling this story, Amy, but um, she picked up a candle, big thick candle. And I'm watching this and I see this girl get mad at her brother and go, poof, in the back of his head. Like, I was like, what? At that moment, I could have lost all hope. <laughs> Why? Because her actions or her behaviour could try to steal my hope. See, what happens in life, actions and behaviours or things that happen to you try to steal your hope. But I didn't steal my hope because my love and faith in God and love for her and her brother and love for God saw with expectation. I didn't look at the problem. I dealt with the problem of throwing candles. But I saw the potential because I had expectation. And some of us are in the candle holding mode and you need to let it go. Some of you might have been hit in the head with a candle, not literally, but you've been disappointed by somebody and you lost expectation of what you could do. Or maybe you've had a dream and it seemed it didn't work out like you thought it should and you had a plan. See, my plan was for Amy to be perfect, to do the dishes at two, to be like slam dunk at four, run 100 metres in 10 seconds at six, to play guitar, keyboards and drums at the same time at eight. Now that's called a fantasy, that's not a dream. And so many times we, we, we get fantasies instead of dreams because we get our expectations from other people instead of God. Mm. But what kept me believing and now she's a mother and she's a great mother. But she looks at Malachi and she doesn't look at him when he complains about not having food enough like her, his father Noah Amy got prepared for that with Noah because he just wants to eat all the time. And she, Amy doesn't go, well, you know, Malachi, all you want to do is eat all the time. No, she, she will put herself out because she has expectation. She has hope. Her hope goes beyond her selfishness into selflessness. <laughs> when you have hope in what God can do in people and hope of what He can do in you and hope of what He can do in your family and hope. It gets you out of your selfish world into a selfless world. (laughs) So today, sorry Amy, that's all she did. The only bad thing she did in her life was throw a candle. I don't know if that's true, but anyway. But today, we got to live in hope, expectation. Overwhelming victory is ours. And so we're going to sing this song from the top. And you might say, I've got to let go of some things. I've got to put the candle down. I've got to let go of that stuff. Maybe you're the receiver of the candle. Or maybe you saw the candle hitting somebody and you've given up hope. 
how I've, how I've got taken that story to a whole nother level. It's, it's amazing. But the truth is, every one of us have had situations that have tried to take our hope, our expectation. I've discovered this. The Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Their strength to what? To expect, to believe, to hope. They will rise on wings of eagles. They will soar and not grow faint. And then it says this little thing, teach me, Lord, to wait. (laughs) See, it's in that in-between moment is where you either give up hope or you build your hope. (laughs) Don't we know that? Don't we know that? Don't we know that? (laughs) You get a dream and it's not how you thought you saw it. But if you keep trusting, keep hoping, it will come to a place that you are a dream that God gave me. Started a church in Melbourne called Plum Shakers. I said, God, what's that? And there's times people have let me down. I've done, haven't done the perfect thing all the time. I'm human. Things have happened and I could have got discouraged and I did. But what got me through is a picture of you, but more importantly, a picture of Him. When I saw Him, I saw you. And that kept us going. That kept us going. Now, we're packed four services on a Sunday here in our campus. It's just amazing what God is doing. And it's not because of anything, but we've just been consistently hoping, consistently believing. Thanks for joining us today. I hope that your faith was filled and you were encouraged. If you have any prayer requests or want to connect with us further, search for us on our social media at Planet Shakers. We'd love to hear from you.